Hi everyone, uh, basically what I've got here lying on my desk is a selection of tube flies, they're tied, well what do you call this style? Uh, originally it was, uh, if I remember right, they're called flat wings, uh, or basically along the back, a teardrop shape, uh, temple dog style flies, there's many, there's quite a few names, or Scandinavian tubes, uh, are the style. These are patterns I've tied now for many years. Uh, me and Michael Froden and Hako Nolan are the two main names behind these as, as far as I believe this style of fly. Uh, the first gentleman I've seen tying them so there's been quite a few others. Now, the style of patterns of obviously the ones that I've got lying here like for instance this one here. This here is basically an alley shrimp version. Uh, that was one of the first uh, I tied to suit the patterns that I was fishing at the time and I uh, wanted to try it and believe it or not the first first day I tried it I had three fish and the first fish took when I was looking at the fly on the surface just swimming I was just looking at it and this fish came up and grabbed it because it was standing on a rock hanging it in the fast water uh, and I had three in a row after that, so it was just uh, amazing like how uh, the takes were pretty hard as well, so they, they, they certainly induce a take by the movement uh, as well as obviously the colours and stuff, it, it just it was amazing how it worked, now, it was many years ago. The colours, I mean I'm obviously the Green Highlander style colour combination, that works really well, uh, I mean it works in Scotland but Certainly works in Norway, uh, the type of water they've got and the colour scheme. I mean, the, the Green Highlander, you'll, if you ask anyone that fishes the Gowler or the Alter or any the other well-known uh, waters in Norway, they'll always mention the Green Highlander. Uh, the colours here are these this browns and oranges. The, the original Temple Dog fly, a bit darker than this, a different colour, but uh, you've got a mix of like... Um, Probably, no it's not close, I don't have any lying around I'll show you but anyway these are very good flies, they're kind of, I would say, uh, it's not a banana fly but it's, it's getting there, it's a cross between the banana and the phantom, there's another good pattern. Now why these are tied on, these are tied on T-tubes from Sean Stanton, yeah, I buy, buy these uh, direct from Sean. I buy more than 10 usually, so uh, the 15 mil up, I think it goes up to 20, 25 I think, could be wrong. Uh, they're good size, good weight. Now, the way I like to, uh, there's a couple of boxes, uh, a couple of ways I store tubes. Now, this, is a, this is a lure box, a box for mainly, this one's mainly for like putting uh, spinners and so on, like, but I use it for my tube flies, it's really good for them. Uh, not so much these, I, I actually prefer a wallet, but for normal tubes I would certainly have different sizes and then I'd put my, my hooks at the bottom with some tubing. The other way I like to store them is in, this is a basically a cast wallet. You, go, you get a rig wallet which is a bigger one, this is a cast wallet which is basically for a, a tapered leader or something or a a dropper cast or a wet fly cast you could put together and put them in but these are ideal for putting these flies in so and not and look after them so basically you can still put your cast in that in there you can put these in uh, they slip in quite easy and they sit nice they don't get uh, destroyed they'll you know, sit in the in the wallet very easy so uh, that's why I like using these, and you can get plenty in there. If you want the really big ones, you better be the rig wallets. Uh, the rig wallets are slightly bigger. But anyway, the other thing I do, this is when I'm varnishing these flies, people ask me. Uh, this is a thing I made up many, many years ago. Um, the first one was just a piece of cardboard and the pins were put through. These are the pins you get dressmaking. I've got the wee. Uh, end on it. Yeah, I've got it. basically two thin pieces of card and I put a hole through one and the pins through and then I 
support it with a card in the back. This is just backing card that you get for, say, a frame. And then when I'm varnishing the fly, I just, once I varnish the fly, I just sit it onto the needle and allow it to dry, just fill it up. Now there's, in this there's 40, so I know exactly what I'm doing. Um, now tubing, there's another one I got asked. By the inner tubing is this that you get for these, for the T-tube, you just put it in, it's quite easy to do. Uh, that's a 1.8. And uh, but for the tubing for the the back, now there's a, flies can get destroyed putting tubing on sometimes, I've watched people doing it. Uh, basically I, I put the tubing on, so I, I put it onto the needle like the wrong way. I just moisten the end. And I slide the tubing on, doing it that way. Slide it up. Now you, the colour of the tubing is up to yourself. You can trim it. Uh, this case I'm using the fluorescent orange, which basically enhances the colour of the fly. So you can see, or you can use, obviously there's the silicon tubing in different colours. Which is kind of the plain clear, black to darken it down. Obviously, fluorescent, that's a chartreuse of yellow, a fluorescent yellow. The green, there's pink in there. You can get other colours as well. But anyway, that's uh, the orange, I would probably say the fluorescent one is the most po uh, popular. And that basically holds your hook in line. Uh, when the fish takes, it goes away, fly goes up the line out of the road. So that's how you do it, and it's easy to change, just pull it off. And if you want to choose a clear in the back, it's up to yourself. So basically that's uh, the type of, the, well, what I do with tubes, and this style of tube. The patterns, I mean, uh, they're good fun to tie, there's a, what they call, the best one to show you would be, this one would probably show you better, what you've got, support. I usually use a kind of stiff hair, maybe a bucktail it sometimes at the back just to hold it up. Uh, you could use, by tapering it you, you allow that to happen anyway, um, but in these cases this is a, a quite a strong fibre. And a nice soft fibre on the top. There's different ways as I say, tying these so you get different movement, but this gives you a lovely teardrop shape. Uh, teardrop shape meaning the, the wing tapers. Uh, what's the best colour to show you there, the bigger one. So basically you've got the teardrop shape, so you've got more resistance at the front and less at the back, so the back then gives and then it moves. So it moves extremely well and you can see the colour a bit better than that one. So you get some good colour blends you'll not go far wrong with. So anyway, there's a wee kind of insight in how I would basically work with some tubes. Um, I'm going to varnish these again, these are another coat of varnish. Basically three coats of varnish to use the fad, and that should be them. Then I'll put the sleeves on them, or I'll put the sleeves on and then varnish. That's what I'll probably do next, so anyway, there we are. So I hope you enjoyed that small video, a quick video on some tube flies, and uh, until next time, and thank you for watching.